Hello, welcome to this week's Forex Outlook here at XM.com. My name is Rafi Boyajian, currency analyst, and here with me is our chief economist, Michalis Florenjadis. Uh, so, Michalis, we had the European Central Bank meeting this week. We weren't expecting uh, any changes, but nevertheless, we did see uh, a slide in the euro yet again. Uh, we also saw a similar slide for the UK pound. So, why were both currencies struggling this week? Uh, I think it was uh, very interesting that the euro was uh, struggling because of uh, a relatively dovish uh, tone by the ECB president, Mario Draghi, who, when he expressed uh, his uh, agreement with the uh, market forecasts that the next uh, ECB rate hike is going to take uh, place uh, around the end of uh, next year. He didn't exactly say this timeline, but he said that uh, markets have uh, understood uh, or he was in agreement with what the markets were uh, projecting and this is what uh, markets are projecting uh, currently. So uh, this is uh, obviously a time that is a long way off so we have uh, steady interest rates for a very long time. On the other hand uh, the UK pound I think we have this ongoing theme of uh, political uncertainty inside the UK. We don't know whether the May uh, government is uh, going to survive and whether her Brexit plans are going to go ahead. And I think this week's uh, most important uh, development was that the EU uh, was not uh, very thrilled with, uh, to put it mildly, not thrilled with uh, May's uh, proposals uh, regarding uh, her vision on uh, Brexit and uh, her vision particularly on what's going to happen in Northern Ireland. So this is a setback for me. It seems that negotiations are again going to be slow. Uh, there was a positive uh, development this week when uh, it seems that the threat of a trade war, at least between the US and the European Union, as well as the US and its NAFTA partners, seems uh, to be uh, less because there was this agreement between uh, President uh, Trump and uh, Jean-Claude Juncker about uh, having uh, talks, refraining from more uh, from uh, more tariffs, maybe the EU undertaking a commitment to buy more U.S. goods. So this, I think, helped uh, risk uh, sentiment, which in turn helped uh, U.S. Treasury yields, which of course uh, boosted the dollar, which had a fairly uh, positive week. So having said this, Rafi, what do we see uh, next week? And let's start with the Bank of Japan, because there are reports that the Bank of Japan may uh, make some changes to its policy uh, next week, may announce some changes. What do you think is going to happen? Uh, that's right. We've had some reports circulating suggesting that the Bank of Japan um, wants to make some tweaks to its policy. Um, the indications are that they merely want to make changes in order to make their a massive stimulus program more sustainable given that they're going to have to maintain it for far longer than they initially uh, expected to given that inflation is still running well below two uh, percent uh, it's uh, i'm not sure whether or not uh, the bank of japan would just yet uh, signal an exit from their qe program uh, we could perhaps see some changes uh, to their ETF program where they actually, uh, apart, other than government bond, they are buying also exchange traded funds uh, with the Nikkei and the topics. Um, so we, we may see some disappointment if the Bank of Japan makes only minor changes uh, and we don't see any clear indication of an exit, uh, though the yen is nevertheless uh, trading broadly stronger uh, this week. It will be very interesting, for, especially for Japanese government bond yields, which have a reason. So if there are no changes, as you say, about uh, their bond buying program, uh, the market could uh, set itself for disappointment. It is a signal, of course, that they are uh, preoccupied about uh, the effect that this massive stimulus is having, but uh, uh, we'll see uh, whether it can be further yet positive. And what about the Bank of England? Uh, Rafi, are we going to get a rate hike, uh, you think? What do the markets think? And is it going to be good for sterling or are the developments uh, kind of bad? And yeah, we have seen market expectations edge higher in recent weeks. Uh, 
But despite that, as you mentioned, the Brexit worries has been way, has been more than offsetting that. We're seeing sterling coming under, remaining under uh, increasing pressure due to the political uncertainty. Uh, the Bank of England, though, will likely go ahead with a quarter of a percentage points rate hike uh, next uh, Thursday. Uh, but also important is going to be what they're going to signal about future rate hikes. If we do see a tight vote um, with um, perhaps, say, um, six or less monetary policy committee members voting for a rate hike, that would probably be perceived as uh, somewhat dovish uh, and the rate hike might not do much in boosting uh, sterling next week. And they might, of course, signal that uh, they are not embarking on a rate uh, hike uh, campaign, that this is a, a one-off uh, event and uh, they are likely to reassess uh, in the future. We, in this case, it could uh, be an opportunity to uh, sell, the, sell the pound, actually. And what about other data? Are we going to get anything or is it going to be, are we entering the summer doldrums and uh, is it going to be a pretty quiet uh, August? Uh, well, no, actually, in fact, it will be a rather busy one. Um, we're going to have the uh, first estimate of euros on GDP next week for the second quarter. Uh, it had been expected for the eurozone to rebound in the second quarter. We're not likely not going to see that. Uh, expect to see growth remaining at 0.4%. We're also going to have the flash eurozone inflation numbers. Uh, we're also going to have um, New Zealand uh, employment numbers as well for the uh, for the quarter. Uh, it's going to be quite busy in the US. We're going to have the non-farm payrolls report coming up as well as the, the core PC price index, which is the Fed's preferred measure on inflation. Uh, all of that could potentially uh, boost the greenback uh, next week. And of course, we do have the Fed uh, meeting. The Fed meeting isn't likely to be um, any uh, as big an event uh, because, uh, as compared to the data due to the fact that we don't have a press conference next week and no uh, updated uh, pr economic projections. Uh, and of course, we're not expecting any move uh, for, for this month by the Fed. Excellent. So it's going to be uh, quite a busy week. The Fed may change in the future because they want to have a press conference uh, right after every meeting to give them more flexibility if they want uh, to raise. So absolutely a very should be an interesting week. Thank you very much, uh, Rafi. Thank you, everyone, for watching, and have a great day.